We have every intention of being the number one electric pickup maker, and then we plan to challenge Tesla and all comers to become the top EV maker in the world. The Ford Motor Company is in the middle of a defining moment as they transition from being a combustion-focused to an EV-focused manufacturer. And in an era where American automakers seem to be making trucks that seem to get bigger and more expensive each year, the Ford Maverick takes a new direction. But Ford has a problem. They've released a car that's too appealing, and now they can't keep up with demand. So why do people love the Ford Maverick so much? And what has the Ford CEO just revealed to solve his production problem? Join us today as we look at the extraordinary measures Ford has taken to keep up with demand for the Ford Maverick. Before we get on to what Jim Farley has just done, it's important to understand why the Maverick is so popular. While most American car makers have been building trucks that keep growing in size and price, the Maverick is a refreshing break from this trend. The Ford Maverick is everything an economy car buyer could want, and much more. It's affordable, economical, looks great, and even though it's light duty, it still offers more utility than most American families will ever need. The cherry on top is that it's one of the cheapest new vehicles available in the United States. So, it wasn't a shock when Ford made the decision to shut down the Maverick order page in January 2022, as concerns grew that they would never be able to keep up with demand. The reason Ford gave was that they needed to focus on existing orders, which is fair enough and a good decision. If you're waiting to put in an order for the 2023 Maverick, orders are currently set to open up in September. You can still put in a request on the Ford website, but you can't pay. Hopefully, they'll reply back to all requests when orders open. It's unlikely that Ford will make any major changes to the new Maverick. The 2023 Ford Maverick will most likely have an identical powertrain to today's version with a hybrid engine and an optional turbocharged engine with 280 horsepower. So how does Ford plan to keep up with demand this time? Jim Farley, Ford CEO, has confirmed they will build not one, but two cutting-edge mega campuses in the US, along with expanding and upgrading all of their existing plants to keep up with demand. The first is called Blue Oval City in Tennessee and will predominantly focus on the Ford Maverick, F-150 Lightning and Ford Ranger. The facility will be 3,600 acres in size, which is larger than 2,700 football fields. It will be a vertically integrated ecosystem with key suppliers, working training facilities, battery manufacturing, and even battery recycling operations on site. It's anticipated to create over 6,000 jobs for trained individuals, and it'll be the company's largest, most advanced, and most efficient auto production plant ever. Blue Oval SK Battery Park, located in Glendale, Kentucky, is Ford's new headquarters for battery production. This massive 1,500-acre campus, which equals 1,234 football fields, cost $5.8 billion to construct and houses some of the company's most advanced facilities, including a training center, manufacturing plant for vehicles and batteries, as well as a cutting-edge R&D facility dedicated solely to developing next-generation battery technology. But that's not all. Ford will be expanding their current U.S. and international plants to help scale up production to cope with its new demand. Ford already has 32 plants globally, spread across the U.S., Canada, Argentina, Mexico, China, South Africa, Germany, India, Romania, Russia, Spain, Thailand, Turkey, and Vietnam. Ford has spent $150 million to expand the Van Dyke Transmission Plant in Michigan and renamed it the Van Dyke Electric Powertrain Center. By investing $3.7 billion and hiring over 6,000 new employees, they're expanding plants in Michigan, Ohio, and Missouri to increase EV truck output. Ford then invested $900 million into improving its Thailand facility to expand hybrid production lines. In Europe, Ford has announced that it will have fully emission-free vehicles, all electric or plug-in hybrid, by 2026. The Cologne plant in Germany will undergo a $1 billion renovation and be renamed the Ford Cologne Electrification Center to produce electric cars. Ford knows they have the demand and now needs to focus on their manufacturing process to make sure they can keep up with it. Henry Ford had the same issues 80 years ago when demand for the Model T was out of control. 
His answer to the problem was the same as Jim Farley's. Build a vertically integrated mega plant capable of huge production numbers. Henry Ford named it the Rouge River Factory in Dearborn, Michigan, and it was completed in 1928. At that point, it was the world's largest and most sophisticated manufacturing plant. It was vertically integrated with its own power plant, steel mill, glass factory, railroad, and docks. The facility was the first of its kind to turn raw materials into running vehicles all within the same compound. People thought Henry Ford was crazy to build such a huge factory. However, it ended up setting Ford apart from his competition. The Rouge River factory was so efficient that it allowed Ford to lower the price of the Model T from $950 in 1908 to just $360 by 1930, which made car ownership a reality for millions of Americans. The Rouge River factory set the stage for a modern-day production line and changed the industry forever. The cars moved down the line and the staff had one job to do on each car, over and over, day in and day out. The factory was so efficient that the staff complained their new job was repetitive and mind-numbing. So, in an effort to keep his workers from leaving, he increased wages and reduced the hours, which secured his current workforce and attracted a tsunami of workers from his competitors across the country to come and work for Ford. Today, Ford has moved to three shifts per day instead of two, resulting in 24-hour production, further enhancing Blue Oval's dominance over its competitors. Ford currently produces 6 million vehicles per year and has a goal of manufacturing 2 million EVs per year by 2025. Jim Farley has been open that this is a lofty goal, commenting, My goal is to set the company up so it has the scaling capacity to 2 million in the next three and a half years, followed up with, 2 million is a really aggressive number for us. It's a third of our capacity. To put this number in perspective, Tesla is on track to produce 2 million cars this year alone. After Elon Musk confirmed in an investor update, it seems likely we'll be able to produce over 1.5 million cars this year. Following up with, it's probably going to be closer to 2 million, but I'm being a little bit conservative there. But Jim Farley doesn't seem to be worried about Tesla, and he's even been throwing out some of his own trolling statements. He reiterated that Ford is number one in the electric truck market in the United States and ended the statement with, Take that, Elon Musk. Although the Ford Maverick has seen a few recalls, it's to be expected from a car in its first year of production. For Ford, the Maverick seems to have arrived at just the right time as consumers are opting for trucks over sedans and crossovers. With its attractive price, the Ford Maverick has opened up truck ownership to people that would never even think about it as an option. The Maverick is compact enough to park in the city, economical with a 40 mile per gallon range, has five seats and provides more utility for everyday life than any normal sedan or crossover could. If Ford can increase their production numbers to meet demand, then this car could really be a modern-day Model T. What do you think about Ford's plans to scale its business to keep up with demand? Is the CEO making the right decision to go all-in on production in America just like Henry Ford? Let us know in the comments. We'd truly appreciate it if you'd leave a like and consider subscribing so you're always in the loop for the latest EV, Ford, Tesla and tech news. See you next time.